Give us any chance, we'll take it. Read us any rule, we'll break it. We're gonna make our dreams come true. Welcome to the National Edit Podcast about eight seasons in a row. I'm Lisa Fernandes and... I'm Chris Jai Wardner. Hello. And we're about to review 2001 A Comic Odyssey, a Laverne and Shirley episode from season three. Directed by Ray Diwali Jr. And written by Chris Thompson and Mark Sotkin. This is facts about them, don't you, Chris? I got a few little facts here. Okay, so Mark Sotkin. Uh, for Mark Sotkin, this is his fourth of 11 episodes he'll have writer credit on. He had already done Tag Team Wrestling, Take My Plants, Please, and New Year's Eve. Uh, he ended up becoming another Charles in Charge uh, writer, as w- which uh, Alan Rafkin and Judy Pioli would let work on later. But now his producing duties on this show of Laverne and Shirley end up starting in season four with uh, Quiz Show. And he would go on to uh, do a lot of producing for that season. Uh, meanwhile, Chris Thompson, uh, this is the fourth of nine episodes he has uh, writer credit on. Uh, one is considered a teleplay only, so that's a bit of a distinction there. Huh. I mean, I don't know if you know him getting somebody writing credits means he's a bit of a bully, but there's a show later that'll go more into that, I think. Yeah. Um, but yeah, aside from that, it, it, we'll, we'll have more time. Chris Thompson notes, I think, later. He has a lot more to go. Uh, but as for uh, director Ray DeValley, my first thought is, Wait a minute, Ray, you know, what are you doing? Get back in front of technical coordination here. (laughs) I believe this is the first episode of season three that is not directed by Alan Rafkin. It is indeed. So Ray DeValley, uh, he was also the director on Buddy Can You Spare a Father, High High Neighbor Book Two, and Citizen Crane. He would actually step down as technical coordinator of this show after the season and would go on to direct more episodes of the show instead. Yeah. As a uh, as a quick side note, as a tech coordinator on sitcoms, one of his most prolific gigs was doing 197 episodes of that 70s show. Wow. Wow. So way to, way to go, Ray. Uh, he has more. Uh, he has five more episodes to go for Laverne and Shirley. So we'll be we'll be getting back to him at some point in the future. That's awesome. Good. And this is what the episode is about. Frank, finishing off the end of a lasting movie with Edna in the girls' living room while they sleep nearby, having abandoned a shared evening together, starts ranting to Edna about his daughter's lack of serious bows and his desire for grandchildren. Laverne, fast asleep, absorbs her father's demands and immediately begins to dream of a future in which she and Shirley are virgins still sharing an apartment at 83. Laverne seems to have a solution in the shape of handsome Zeke Hofstetter, and Shirley wistfully yearns for Carmine. But both girls are quickly disappointed when Zeke dies and Carmine turns out to have joined the priesthood. The last hope comes in the form of Lenny and Squiggy, now real estate moguls. One a multiple times divorcee and the other a typical widower. Laverne is eager to marry Lenny, but he can't marry her unless Squiggy's espoused as well due to his melancholia. Shirley reluctantly accepts Squiggy's proposal, but will she go through with the ceremony? What do you think of this one? Well, that was a trip. That's yeah. Dream episodes are often good and weird in some shows. I mean, yeah. you know, from as far back as the uh, the Walnut episode of Dick Van Dyke to the yeah. uh, the Dino- the T Rex Dream episode of the '80s Gumby, which yeah. terrified me as a child. Oh, dear. This is kind of somewhere in the middle, where it's a bit strange and surreal, um, and it's a bit terrifying in times. I mean, yeah. Lenny's Lenny's old man makeup looks like the tall man from Phantasm. <laughs> Oh. It's just I'm just I'm just waiting for him to go start chasing Michael Baldwin going, boy, you know, God. <laughs> uh, but uh, it's 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 but no, I mean, that all said, it's uh, it's a lot of fun. Um, there's there's some problematic jokes regarding yeah. body shaming that I'm not too happy about yeah. and kind of cringed constantly through. Yeah. But um, there's also a lot of cute stuff. Um, there's, it, it's a very comedy-driven episode that they are just yeah. eating up the audience reaction to as well. So yeah. it's, it's got its pluses and minuses, but it's, it's, it's fun. I mean, there's a lot to go into. Lord, have this episode's fat jokes aged so poorly. Yep. So poorly have they aged. They have aged so poorly. Uh, the best thing about their existence in the episode is that Lenny isn't a Laverne no matter what. He is, in fact, aroused by the size of her breasts. <laughs> and it's very disappointing that he does not get to grab them when he leaves that wedding <laughs> without having to marry her. Uh, that is the only good part of that gag. It is not funny to see a thin person in a fat suit. 
It is not funny to watch her break the couch. It is not funny to have all that crap thrown around and have to look at it and have to see them like mock people of a certain size, even though she gets a great line. She has a really great line about how she's old, but it doesn't matter because she's still fast. She's still got a life in her. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That should have been where it starts and stopped and started. I know this gag exists in the episode because Frank is worried that she's going to get fat before she gets married, which what? Shut up, Frank. Frank needs to shut up. Yeah, shut up, Frank. Frank needs to shut up the episode. That's what this episode is. Hey, hey, future cool. me, can you put up a, on the YouTube version, can you put up a picture of Walter Sobchak? Shut the f*** up, Frank, you're out of your element. Thank you. <laughs> and so he is. Uh, I like a lot of different things about this episode, on the other hand. I love Priest Carmine. Yes. For some yes. reason, Eddie Mecca just eats up every inch of playing a priest. Uh, Putting on the fake uh, Bing Crosby-ish Irishness of it. Mm-hmm, and singing mm-hmm. Turl Earl Earl. And, <laughs> and <laughs> it's the mental image of him singing. He has a beautiful <laughs> moment where he's marrying the four of them. And everyone says, I do, except for Shirley. And then we cut to his face after she says no. And he slams close his Bible and it's fabulous. Mm-hmm. It's some A. Mecca's best acting so far in the show. He's just very dry and very cynical, and and yet really, really enjoying being a priest. As he says, it's the steadiest work he's ever had. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and I mean, he has, he has a nice yeah. boss, as Shirley points out. Yeah, yeah, he has a nice boss. Yeah, there's really good acting from everyone as they try to envision themselves. A good 50 years in the future. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can actually, at this point, almost compare everyone in their 70s to uh, how they looked in old age makeup. And find out how, how good of a job they did predicting things. Which is kind of amusing in its own way. There's some really funny bits in here. Uh... And it's interesting what the moral is. The moral is excellent in that Laverne has a full happy life even without a marriage. Mm -hmm. She has a full happy life as an old woman and she really doesn't need to be married. They have each other, which is a great message. A great message to espouse, the great message to have. I just wish it was in a rotten layer of fat jokes. Because God... Oh, it's so pervasive, but so terrible. Yeah, it's, it's, un- it's unfortunate because there's so many good bits throughout, as you're saying. I mean, I, I love the, yeah. uh, when they're, at, they're considering the offer. Yeah. Yeah, they're considering the idea. Shirley goes, there's still Lenny and Squiggy. And then the, the two of them get up from the couch and go, hello, as if they thought <laughs> it was, they're so old and senile, they thought it was a cue. <laughs> That is a great bit. I love the idea of Lenny losing his first wife, literally losing her somewhere. Yep, lost her someplace. Yeah, we don't, we don't know where. Never found her again. <laughs> and then Squiggy has a, a 12 wives. Most of them shot him. Right. <laughs> two of them tried to poison him. Yeah, two tried to poison him. And, um, oh, the God, there was another. Him. The rest just didn't understand him. Didn't understand him. That's right. Yes. And I love how he calls him. It's like, I've been married 12 times and no children. 12 barren women. The <laughs> luck I've had. And it's like, uh, dude, you might want to get your dick checked. Yeah. He has not picked up on the fact that he's shooting blanks. And it's hilarious. It's hilarious. Of course he wouldn't think that. It's Squiggy. Right. He is the most manly man in all of existence. He would never. And not, to, not to connect manliness and fertility. Or even cisgender bodies. But in his mind, in his sexist mind, where only women cry, in his little brain, uh, to be potent and to produce children is the highest level of masculinity. So that's why he thinks the way he does. I mean, 
I do have a theory. Maybe he doesn't understand how baby making works, and he actually ha- is a father to like two dozen kids, and all the wives kept the kid the kids secret from him. <laughs> That's a good idea. That's a wise idea, especially they, they, since they're all probably smarter than him. Yeah, that makes sense. Yep. Oh, it's fabulous. Yeah, and and this and as we're saying, you know, there's these great dialogue bits. There's the wonderful physical comedy. I love the uh, you're too old to be picky, and Shirley just going yeah. after the hair. Yeah, and it's like a little squirrel. Squ- eleven dollar squ- squ- hairpiece. <laughs> Yikes! I hope you save the receipt for that. I mean, granted, an eleven dollar hairpiece today yeah. probably doesn't get you much. Yeah. So, God. Oh God. But yeah, it's. <laughs> I love them trying to, and like them trying to get on their knees to pump the question and they're just trying to get the down to the, ah, yeah, you know, and it's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then Lenny falls asleep holding Laverne's hand, this cheek against her fingers, which is adorable and also hilarious. It is. He's that far gone. But you get that great line. You can do anything, do add. Uh, she asks if you can still perform his husbandly duties. He says, everything but mow the lawn. <laughs> Which Hot is dog. a great line. Hot dog. She wants to bang him so hard for someone who is not attracted to him and doesn't want to marry him. Is all I gotta say. <laughs> she is so into the idea of banging him in this dream. And I don't know what that says about her Freudian state, her mental state. Her mental state is fascinating to me here because she's interpreting. Uh, Shirley and Carmine's equal unquote, you know, super pure relationship where they're not doing it as him being a priest. Mm-hmm. Uh, Lenny's attracted to her as in life, no matter what. Squiggy has uh, measure pulse dozens and dozens of women. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Never been murdered by someone she, because as we saw a couple episodes ago, she would gladly kill him <laughs> and pound him to death. Mm-hmm. And in her dreams, she's still as herself. She's still as athletic as ever, even though she puts L's all over the apartment on everything. So yeah, it's interesting to which, dive which makes me wonder brain. if that. I'm I'm, I'm sorry that we've got a little uh, overlap there on our Discord there yeah, recording this, yeah. but yeah, the the thought I, I had was um, I wondered if she marked every, labeled everything with the L's in case that you know there was a bout of like she had memory loss problems for a while. Or if Shirley had memory loss problems for a while and she had to mark everything as her so that Shirley wouldn't touch something and hurt herself because she wasn't wearing her glasses. Oh, that's actually sweet. Uh, Shirley's just incredibly nearsighted here. Right. That's that's her big gimmick is that she's incredibly nearsighted, but Laverne is still out there being herself. And she's just bigger. Mm. And ultimately, I can see that being a reason. I can see that being a reason why she put the L's over her. But it's supposed to, I guess it's supposed to be a neurotic, quote unquote, representation of her having to entertain herself because she's frustrated. Mm. I suppose that's what the writers were going for, I suppose. Wait, are you trying to imply that mon- putting the L's on everything is a masturbatory gesture of self uh, Claiming self-love? ownership. Claiming ownership. Hey, this one on Lenny's back, so hey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Uh La la la. <laughs> you said you really liked the opening scene. You told me that I off did. Yes. It's so cute. I love the two of them like this old couple. I love the Frank and Edna relationship. It is yeah. one of my favorite relationships in the entire show. And this is one of the sweetest bits. Phil and Betty do an amazing job with this. I love the way... Edna curls her hand around. It's like, oh, Frank, don't cry. Last he came home, and yeah. he was like, I'm not crying. And <laughs> what was what's the line? It's I remember you mentioned you quote quote a lot. The the one that uh, is that is that in this one? The face is leaking. Uh, no, that is uh, from that. The face is leaking is from uh, this is the cemetery, which is season five, four, the season four. Okay, okay. Um. I, I ain't crying. My nose is sweating. It's from Squiggy in season two. That's so, right. That's right. That, that, those are two different quotes. Okay. Yeah, but his nose is sweating. His nose is sweating. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> I love the bizarreness of them sitting there continuing to watch the movie even though the girls are going to sleep. Doesn't Edna have a set of her own? Like, <laughs> it's like, she's going to have a TV set. I mean. Yeah, but it's, but you know what it is? They're keeping watch on the kids. Yeah. That's yeah. what makes it so sweet to me. It's yeah. family. Yeah, and also the snuggling, sir. You don't want to move when you're snuggling. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, no. Totally. At that age, I mean, look, honey, we're think of us at our age. We want yeah. to move to the other to the other apartment. Yeah. 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 True. 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 Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was going to to mention uh, the dream logic going on here of uh, Laverne actually following everything Shirley told her to do and saving it till she's 83. And then the second Zeke Hofstetter shows interest in her, she's got this this uh, top, the see-through black top that she's willing to put mm. on in front of Carmine, which is that was hilarious. The way she's just like, yeah, let's see. Let's see look at it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I'm kind of disappointed we didn't get to see her in that. Uh, I know. There should be a version where she and Lenny got married. But anyway, <laughs> uh, but yeah, she's determined to vodeo dough before she goes. Yeah, uh, must vodeo dough before I go. Yeah, she isn't tragically, tragically Zeke does not get to experience that before he kicks the bucket. <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean, you know. I'm just trying to imagine, you know, you're old, you see a bucket, it offends you. How can you not kick it? Uh, uh, oh, was that was that was that uh, joke that bad? Was it really was it that bad? Come on. <laughs> Come on. I've done worse at jokes than that. Uh, I love oh, I mentioned Carmine, how good Carmine is in this episode. Go credit to Eddie for that. I love mm-hmm. The fact that he is fencing stuff on the side in Laverne's imagination, even though he's a priest, mm-hmm. he still knows how to get hot clock radios and how to get cameras. <laughs> it's like, what is going on in that church? Mm-hmm. What is going on in that church? Oh, yep. that's marvelous. Uh, there's a lot of great dialogue in this episode. Oh, absolutely. Like, you want a boy or a girl? I want a gun. <laughs> <laughs> Squiggy is nothing personal. You're just too strange. He just loses it and has a great monologue, a really great monologue. Mm-hmm. He has his dignity no matter what. No matter what, he has his dignity. Uh, I love that. I love that little bit and how yeah. it ends up working out. I, lo- I love, by the way, the little tiny moments where after they accept the proposals, Lorraine let it go to make out on the couch. And they do. And Squiggy tries to grab Shirley. Come here, my little love beetle. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> he crashes on the floor. Oh, jeez. Uh, yep. Yeah. So far. Yeah. Uh, I was going to mention. Uh, this is a beautiful anti-ageist and feminist statement in that final speech after the girls chase each other around the couch <laughs> for minutes. Uh, but the fat phobia kind of just, uh, it just reduces the impact so much, so much. Mm. But the rule of sisterhood continues to be a thing. Their relationship continues to be paramount. They have each other. It doesn't matter that they're 83-year-old virgins. Right. I, even th- I think that's sweet, in a way. Like, Laverne solves it for herself. She really doesn't even need to hear Frank's approval. She really doesn't even need to, to hear him tell her that it's okay, she can marry whoever the heck she wants and whenever she wants. She's already worked that out in her mind for waking up, yep. but yeah. I think it's, it's in some respects, what it shows is that the dream already gets her there. And I think yeah. having that experience with, with when Frank tells her so, or, you know, Edna and Frank tell her so when she's awake, it kind of helps cement the idea. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that, all that, all the dialogue there is pretty nice. Uh, like, you're still alive? And we're going, you're still alive, which is his Frank. Yeah. And then he says, sometimes Edna doesn't think so. <laughs> <laughs> I love that bit. Yeah, I forgot to mark that down, but yeah, I love that line. Yeah. Oh, that's so good. And Frank, still demanding an Italian guy from the, after all that. Yeah, just make sure he's Italian. You know, sometimes you're a nightmare. It's like, yes, yeah. as, yes, Edna. Good, good. Yes. <laughs> yes. Kill him. Get him, Edna. Uh, even though she calls the idea of Laverne Lenny getting married a nightmare, yet she approved of him dancing and kind of having a mini romance and kissing her daughter. Mm-hmm. I don't know why Edna's so against the idea of them being together or why she would think that was nightmarish, other than the fact that he's a horrible tenant. 
in that he has ru- helped ruin the apartment that he lives in. Mm-hmm. And he's always late with the rent. But otherwise, you know, he's not the worst option Laverne has or will experience in this show, mm-hmm. basically. She could do worse. She will do worse. Sadly, she will do way worse. And we'll get there. Oh, eventually. no. Oh, God. Oh, I warned you. Geez. I, it's it's one of those I don't want. I don't think I want to know, but I know we'll get there. Yeah. Well, I really liked and really noticed has how appreciative this particular audience is. Yes. For this episode, they were very into it. They were very into the idea before them getting married. Mm-hmm. They kind of went big and applauded very loudly when they uh, floated the idea before them getting married. I thought that was cute. Oh, the audience is very here for it. It's, it. This is definitely one of those ones that the the audio recording was good enough that they were able to get the the audience yeah. really, really big on the 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 soundtrack, and so it, their reactions are fantastic. Yeah, yeah, that was really good. Uh, I had about three more points. They were listed completely out of order, but I got three more points. <laughs> okay, uh, okay. I love okay. it when Squiggy says it's time for them to get right to the honeymoon part. <laughs> and Lenny tries to bite his, bite his wrist and he gives up mid gesture. Yes. You just can't get I, his I, uh, Regarding the hand bite. Yeah. With, with the hand bite, yeah, I love that you, you see him start to go for it and then he, he lets go. And I forgot to note it. I wanted to note it, but it's, it's one of those. I love that they capture one of the things about getting old is that some things are just too, they're just not worth the effort. Yeah. <laughs> you, just, you, yeah. Re, you reach yeah. a point of just, ah, eh, fuck it. Yeah. Hey, when you can do everything but mow the lawn, some things are gonna let go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh yeah, no, yeah, totally. If the plumbing downstairs is working working yeah. fine at at that age, yeah. hey man, take your victories. It's like eh, I gotta I gotta I gotta save that blood flow for later for other places. <laughs> this episode should have given it to us anyway. Go on, episode. Oh, uh, they. This has another really great door gag, and it kind of echoes the one in the pilot, where Shirley says that Prince Charming is gonna walk through the door. Uh, in comes Squiggy, and once again, in comes Squiggy when she says the next guy that come, that they see is gonna be the Mister Right. Hmm. Yeah, I thought that was a nice echo, and it's almost really fady. Hmm. Kind of like a little, little portents of fate, even though it doesn't turn out that way. But I yeah, it was uh, it, yeah. It's one of those yeah. one of those. It probably wasn't planned that way, but it comes off that way. And you know what? Yeah. We fans will take it. Take it. We will definitely take it. Uh, I love it uh, when Carmine. Actually, asks Carmine a question. And he goes, "Shoot, my child," and then she tries I love to that see, line. Yeah, that was a good line. And then she tries definitely to seduce him by saying she's read books. Mm-hmm. I read books. I read books. Like, oh, honey. Oh, honey. Oh, honey. Yeah, but, but they, come on, she read. She read Peyton Place. We know that canonically. They all did. They all did. Even the boys <laughs> could barely read. Oh, uh, you sure kiss all right. No one else in the world. Cue mop boner here. Anyway. <laughs> Okay, that this brings us over to the tag scene, mm-hmm. uh, which is really really cute because Shirley's lying in bed laughing at Laverne for uh, dreaming that she was marrying Lenny, and then Laverne goes like, "Yeah, hey, you marrying Squiggy," and she exaggerates everything, saying she's pulling off his shirt, saying, "I want you, I want you, I want you," and then and then uh, lying that they had a bunch of kids, which is great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, did, did, did you mark down the list of all the names? Yes. Squiggy Jr., Squiggle and Squiggy and the Twins, and Martha and Rodan. Uh, Godzilla and Rodan. I, I thought it was Martha and Rodan. It's Godzilla, Godzilla and Rodan. It? I remember uh, because I noted in my notes that it was finally accurate because Godzilla and Rodan had both been released in the United States by this point, uh, where unlike the uh, prior, prior episode that I mentioned about Toho Scope. There you go. There we go. Okay, so it's Godzilla and Rodan. I don't know why I put down Mothra. I could have sworn I heard Mothra. Okay. Oh. I mean, and, you know, I may double check and I might be wrong, but I'm fairly, I'm fairly certain. I'm fairly certain. 
And you know me, I take these, I take my giant monsters very seriously. By this point, I, yeah. I, I don't know how many episodes of my Let's Play channel I have done of Godzilla games, but probably quite a few by the point this time this one goes up. <laughs> uh, but anyway, yeah, no, I love the scene. That's why I, I wanted to make a list, but I didn't get a chance to do so before we recorded. Yeah. So I was hoping that you had. Yeah, I had whole I love things the whole thing. Screwed the, up the last part, apparently. I'll double. T- I, I'll double check on yeah. DVD too. Actually, I might check on the, uh, through other sources. But yeah, I love that that keeps coming up. Monster movies keep coming up in connection to the show, uh, to the point where you can absolutely picture that eventually Lenny and Squiggy would name one of their kids uh, Rodan or Godzilla or Mothra. You just see it in your mm-hmm. mind's eye. Oh, God, what if they decided to be cruel? Well, I mean, not cruel, but like, you know, unintentionally cruel and name them Reptilicus. Oh, God. <laughs> don't do that to them, Yeah, don't. call don't, you Reppy. <laughs> yeah. Godzilla is bad. You know, I mean, I, I don't think you should name your kid Godzilla, to be honest, as much as a fan as I am. Reptilicus yeah. is, you know, almost need to call Child Protective Services. Yeah. Yeah. You can almost get away with Rodan. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you can almost... You can almost get away with Mothra. Almost. Middle name almost. for sure. Middle name for sure. And then, yes, there you go. There you go. Oh, goodness. Yeah. <sighs> God, should I... What do you, Lisa, what do you think? Should I name my firstborn Gamera Jai Wardna? Go for it. To be honest. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Go for it. <laughs> Uh, well, you know, hopefully they'll grow up to be, uh, be a, chil- be a, a great school teacher, a friend to all yeah. children. Friend to everyone. Yeah. Friend to all the children. All yeah. the children. Anyway. Um, Yay. but yeah, so now the tag scene's great. I love, I love Shirley coming in at the very end there, which yeah. is great. I love that they wait. They make you almost believe that Shirley isn't in there in the room and cause she's all covered up under the blankets. And then finally at the mm-hmm. end, she comes up. I, that I thought was a great touch. Yeah. Yeah. In that initial scene with Frank, Edna, and Laverne at the end, it absolutely looks like there's just a pile of blankets on the bed. Mm-hmm. You actually mm-hmm. don't notice that Cindy's lying there. So that's really good. That's interesting staging. Yeah. yeah. And it feels it feels very intentional. Like they wanted it to feel like, okay, let's keep her hidden. Almost like to surprise the audience. I almost wonder if they they did a take where they didn't let the audience know and the audience was a little too overreactive when she popped up as possible depends on the order of how they recorded the scenes though but yeah. in any case so. yeah i have no idea i think they filmed everything linearly i would assume so uh assume. unless it's a unless it's the cross cut like wrap around like we're doing like we're seeing here which means they may have had to shoot one of the one of the other first it's for uh wardrobe changes and the yeah. like yeah yeah, yeah. But any any yeah. case, though, yeah, it was it was fun. It was a lot. It, I mean, it's fun. I have my issues with it, but it's but it's fun. You know, I I don't think I really have many more yeah. notes here, yeah, other yeah. than the the remark "shoot my yeah. son" sounds like a like a nineteen sixties spaghetti western title. Yeah, you know, like only yes. like like uh, yes. God has God forgives. I don't. <laughs> or um, perfect, actually. God, there actually is another. There's a title. What is it? Um, if you live, shoot, which I think is the one of the titles yeah. for Django Kill. Yes, actually, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wait. Yeah, I forgot about that. You know what Django Kill is? Yes. I know um, what most of the Django series is about, so. Oh, my God, I love you. Oh, my God, I love you. I do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, sorry. It's just, it's so rare to find not only somebody that you're, that you, that you like, but somebody that is very special to you and that you end up, uh, you you don't have to introduce them to these things they already know they know you and see that's that's the thing when you get when you get old yeah. when you're in your 80s you know when when you're in your 80s and you've got you've wondered, running out of options yeah. for marriage for vodio dodo yeah. sometimes you just need yeah. the person that's that knows the same movies that's from the same neighborhood exactly. there you go hopefully isn't going to you know go after reggie bannister with silver spheres but you know <laughs> Got, and if you look at that old age makeup and the way they managed, like I said before, the way they managed to fail to predict the future is kind of funny in a way. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Everybody look, nobody looks like that 
in the, in their seventies as they do in old age makeup. Which is interesting, given that the old uh, for old age makeup, it's actually pretty good. The bald cap for David's yeah. not bad. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, 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 yeah. Even the fat suits, as tough as this is for me to say, actually looks for 70s TV decently authentic mm -hmm. like eh, it's passable the makeup is not bad it's not bad mm -hmm. yeah. I think it's ranking time I think it is um, do, you, do you want to go first sure um, the fat jokes drag this one down tubes for me uh, with the fat jokes included it's like a um um, round a five. No, it's around a four. It's around there. The fat jokes just sink it so hard. Uh, without the fat jokes, this would be around a six for me. Uh, because a lot of the dialogue is great and quotable. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I've said, I have quoted that I want a gun part repeatedly mm -hmm. <laughs> to mm -hmm. my friends. And uh, it's a believable dream, and it gives you interesting insight into Laverne's psyche. What she thinks, like, she would do this if not for X. Mm -hmm. Or, this is what she really thinks about Comrade and Shirley's relationship, she's just not saying it. Uh, it's, it has a great message, minus the fat phobia, uh, about independence and how it's good to be older. Embrace being older. Embrace being single. Embrace all of these things. But, you know, the makeup is nice. Uh, the little tweaks they make to the apartment are a lot of fun. Eddie Mecca rules his scenes as Priest Carmine. He's just having so much fun. Mm -hmm. and he's deadpan and snarky. That's all, that's all good. Uh, the boys are excellent. Uh... It's absolutely plausible that that would happen to the two of them in the future. So that's where that's how I feel. That's how I feel about. It. Yeah, um, a lot of the same things. I mean, I part of me wanted to be generous enough to give it like a five, just because that the comp the stuff that works does work so well. But I think when I th when I do look back on the reactions people in the audience have to the fat jokes and how that reinforces, therefore for anyone watching this. So say like you were to introduce this show, the series to like an eight or nine year old, you know, or yeah. a 10 year old, it would reinforce those jokes. And there is a degree of social responsibility. I feel, I mean, not to get all on the high horse about this, you yeah. know, because, you know, I mean, some of the movies that I like, I mean, even some that I, I know you and I have discussed recently, I don't really have the best footing to stand on in terms of that, but yeah. it just feels, it makes me, it doesn't make me feel good. As someone yeah. who is overweight, the fat jokes, yeah. the fat phobia is um, is grotesque, and it's uh, it's done in a way that is meant to be very tongue in cheek, but it's it comes off as a condemnation that yeah. this is that that is and that's what makes it a nightmare more than her getting married to Lenny. Yeah, and that's and that's awful. And and just to kind of like so I guess from like a context point. Um, that being said, agreed about Carmine's great. Uh, I do love a lot of the dialogue. The message is wonderful. Uh, my mom actually did, did have a comment about this, which was that, you know, she was hopeful that there was that, you know, she was thankful that at the time, you know, it was a sign that there was be beginning to be a release of pressure on women to get married at the yeah. time the show was made. And she said, you know, today it's it's getting better and better progressively that she because she's known so many women that did get, you know, because as a mother, you know, she met other women who got married, had kids and did all that. And she could tell they were not only unhappy, like they did not want to be do this. It was not something yeah. they wanted to do in their life. Yeah. And it's yeah. a case of, you know, if it's, if that's what you need to have a full life, if that's what makes you happy, great, but that's yeah. not for everybody. So it, it, it is a good message and, and all that, but yeah. yeah, my, um, my, my last note, I think is just that, um, it's a, it's good. I might, to be honest, like when I think about this, like would I ever re like, I don't really want to watch it again. A yeah. lot of these other episodes, I would be okay with watching again. This one yeah. I can live without. So I yeah. think, yeah, I'm going to ding it down straight on down 4.5. Yeah. yeah. That's about right. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's one of those things where if you cut out certain bits, and if you had just focused like on Lenny being attracted to her no matter what, because the problem is Laverne's thought process. Laverne thinks if she's fat, she's going to be this horrifying monster, and it comes up before. It's come up before. I'll be fat and no one will date me. Mm -hmm. And it's really it's part of her self esteem issues. And so much could be done with that notion. And it just doesn't go there. And it uh, just turns into a bunch of easy, unappealing, unflattering, terrible fat jokes. So, yeah, that is things what to do. Is. <sighs> yeah, indeed. Anyway, yes. so, I guess, so I guess that's it for today, huh? Yes, indeed. Okay. Well then, everybody out there, uh, just uh, I'm just hoping that you had a good time with Night After Night. If you'd like to know more, you just, gee, gee gosh golly, you can find us at Night After Night Pod on uh, the Facebooks, on the uh, the Tumblers there, as well as on the WordPresses and uh, on the YouTubes as well. And if uh, you want to get to us a little more directly, we also could be found on Twitter at Night After Night PC. And uh, and also, you know, you can support us on the Patreon if you feel like uh, helping us out a little bit with, uh, you know, paying off the DVDs that we paid for to, to do the show. Because, uh, oh, geez, we got to we got to support some physical medias there. Anyway, uh, I think uh, I think that's going to be all for the right now. But uh, gee, gosh, uh, Lisa there. Uh, what do we what do we cover in there next? Carmine tries to buy the dance studio where he works, but he doesn't have the cash flow necessary to buy the place. So he tries to get a loan and has to go through, uh, jump through all kinds of hoops to get there. This is the dance studio. Well, gosh, looking forward to it, eh? All right, thanks a bunch to everybody. We'll see you there next time. Mm -hmm.